Hi, many people have asked me how much Python they need to know before they start learning Django. The things I'm going to go through in this video will also be true for other languages and frameworks as well. Some people learn differently than others. Maybe you're the type of person who can just create the Django project and learn Python while you're creating that project. But I don't recommend doing it this way because knowing the basics of Python will make it much easier to understand Django and how everything there works. So what is the basics of Python you need to know? First of all, you need to know how to install Python. This probably just applies to Windows because it's built in on Mac OS, Linux and similar. Still, it's nice to know how to install Python because it can come in handy when you're going to deploy a project, a server and similar. The next thing you need to know is to install packages using pip. Pip is a software for installing Python libraries. For example, you need to use pip to install Django. Pip is also used to install different things like payment gateways, image libraries and similar. And installing things using pip is very simple to do. For example, if you want to install a Django using pip, you just write pip install Django in your console. Next thing you need to learn about is importing, because you need to import the packages you have installed. For example, if you have installed Stripe as a payment gateway, you can import them by saying import Stripe. Or if you just want to in import a little part of it, you say from Stripe import and then one of the function or modules. And you should also know how to import things from Python like OS or date time. So what else is nice to know about the basics of Python? You should know what the variable is. A variable is something that you store data in. For example, a string, integer, booleans, lists, tuples, dictionaries, etc. You should also know the basics of dictionaries, lists and tuples. What is the difference? Uh, a dictionary has keys so you can access the individual values uh, by using keys. And the list and the tuple looks very similar, it's just that the tuples are immutable, so you can't change the values of the tuple after it's created. And you should also know about functions, how you pass in parameters, how you get values back from functions and similar. And the same goes with classes, how you create a class, how you extend a class, and uh, how you use a class. So if you, for example, look at this, this is a Django models. If you know the basics of Python, much of this will probably make sense. Up here we import models from Django. Then we create a new class and pass in a parameter. These are variables connected to the class. And then we extend it by adding a meta class, which is options for the model. And then we have the def underscore underscore str. This is a string representation of the object. And we also create another function which should look familiar if you know Python. And here we use format to format this string and return it. And the same is if you go into settings.py. If you know Python, this should also look familiar. You do import, you define some constants, you have a boolean variable, you have a list, another list, and you also have a dictionary which contains other lists, booleans and other dictionaries and more dictionaries. Here you combine or concatenate strings. So if you know Python, much of this will make more sense than if you just jumped right into doing this. And when you know those things, you can start learning about for loops, while loops, and if and else. So you can start comparing values. For example, you can compare if a name is similar to other name, or if a value is higher or lower than other value if a value is true and similar, because if that's the case, you might want to execute one part of your code, and if not, you want to execute a different part of your code. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And it's also nice to know how you split strings, how you format strings, how you convert integers to strings, and how you go from a float to integer, and vice versa. By knowing all of these basic things, learning Django will be so much easier. And now I want to tell you how I got started with Python and Django. It goes back very many years and I was sitting in the living room with my brother and he was telling me what to write on the computer. For example, he could say something like, write 
animals equals and then a square bracket cat dog sheep and cow and this is what you call a list and a list is a collection of strings integers objects and similar and you can access values in a list you can remove values from a list and you can change values from a list and similar and after a while he was saying to me now you know python and i was thinking to myself i don't think so <laughs> But I was intrigued. It looked very cool and I wanted to learn more. So for the coming weeks I researched on my own. I built a couple of password generators, hangman games, etc. But after that I didn't use it for a year or so. And then 2005 came and I heard about Django. I watched a video conference called Snakes and Rubies where they talked about Django and Ruby on Rails. And I was really impressed by the talk about Django that Adrian made. He made a very good impression of the framework and after a video I played around with both of the frameworks for a while but Django quickly became my favorite and since I already knew the basics of Python much of the Django already made sense to me. I learned the basics and built a couple of small projects and after a few years I built the biggest project I've done so far. This was a website that was called Finne Freelancer which is Norwegian for find a freelancer. So it was basically a Norwegian version of Elance, Guru, Freelancer.com and similar. And I learned a lot during this process. But I still wanted to learn more so I could build even cooler things. A few years after this again I built a new really big project using Django. This was a project called Finfido. This is a kind of an Amber Alert application for lost and found animals. I also built the API for the same application which I used for iPhone and Android app. So most of my knowledge has come from building different projects. Each time I start something new, I try to think to myself what features I can implement so I can learn something new. For example, for the API I had to build for the app, I had to learn a lot about JSON and security. But what I think has made me learn most of the Django I know is actually making videos about the subject. Because when I make videos, I need to explain many different things in my own words. And that makes it stick much better in my head. And also, when I go through someone else's tutorials, I like to play around with the code to make it easier for me to understand what's going on. So I change the name of the variables, so often some of the values, the function names and similar. Because if something crashed then, it's easier to know why it crashed. And people learn differently. And for me, the best way is to learn by doing and making it stick better in my head by explaining to you how things work. So that sums up what I have done to learn Django. And that was it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, it would be super awesome if you click like below. Because it will help me grow the channel. And I can create even more content like this for you for free. So please click like below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.